Ці технології розвиваються під час криз і під час е, тих ситуацій, коли е, в тебе обмежені ресурси, але потрібно приймати швидкі рішення. Для нас зараз дуже важливо, щоб всі українці мали доступ до онлайн-послуг, тому що, наприклад, якщо там термінова евакуація, то документи завжди з тобою. Вони зберігаються, навіть якщо щось може статися з фізичними документами. Ти можеш швидко отримати гроші для евакуації. Тому швидка реакція держави на проблеми, яких набагато більше під час таких криз, як у нас сьогоднішня, сьогоднішня війна в Україні, це важливий виклик, і цифрова держава дозволяє вирішити ці проблеми. І на сьогодні вже більше ніж 30 тисяч людей отримали виплати по пошкодженому майну, і вже почалися перші виплати і монетизація сертифікатів за зруйноване майно. Тобто люди, в яких було зруйноване майно, вони отримали через дію цю послугу, отримали кошти, сертифікат, і його обміняли на реальне житло. Зараз ми бачимо, як багато інших країн починають впроваджувати подібні продукти. І ми стали трансетерами в напрямку цифрової трансформації. І цифровий паспорт, він дозволив відразу десяткам мільйонів українців розповісти про цифрову трансформацію і долучитися до неї, отримати цей документ, тому що це найбільш поширений документ в нашій країні. How much of your budget are you allocating to experimentation? Okay, and and really, you need to be allocating about 10% of your budget to that. Now that seems like a lot, but there's always money in everybody's budget that's being spent on kind of what I would call sedimentation, you know, down at the bottom. Um, and uh, you know, I would encourage every leader to look and say, you know, how do I find that money? Uh, because if you don't find that money and use it to do things that maybe a little bit of a moonshot or a little bit of, you know, a crazy idea, then you're not allowing your team to think outside the box enough and you're going to miss an opportunity. There are so many smart people in technology that you just have to say either I don't know or we don't have a good answer, so let's take a step back and let's try to push what do we know, what do we not know, how do we, how do we get there and what are the options and what are the risks. You know, it's all about risk management and, um, and, then, if we, and then if we decide we can't get there, then we have to kind of 
admit that and not continue to go down the rabbit hole. I got a piece of advice uh, once um, and I didn't appreciate it at the time and, and I am immensely thankful for it. And it is the following, which is you always bring yourself with you. Sometimes when you are having challenges and difficulties, you really have to look in the mirror and think about, is it you? Is it how you react? And really own that yourself. Um, and because it really does, it kind of clarifies things for you. The reason why the hydroelectric plants are so interesting is because Virunga um, is a, it's a mountainous park with very high rainfall and so you have these um, streams that flow into rivers that become incredibly high energy torrents and that can be converted into, into electricity. Um, and the thing about electricity is it's not just about light bulbs, um, it's actually about life itself for many people. Um, it provides um, the power behind um, thousands of small businesses that are growing much faster because of the cheap source of energy. Um, and what we found is that with every megawatt of electricity, and the park can generate over 100 megawatts, that's 34 times what was being produced in terms of electricity before the park started supplying it. Um, every one of those megawatts will create between 800 and 1,000 jobs. Eleven percent of those jobs created are being picked up by young men and women who were in the militias, um, who were really amongst the perpetrators of this extreme violence but they're not in those militias because they choose to be. This is an area where there's 70% unemployment. They're there out of desperation. And if you can provide them with an alternative, they'll take it immediately. And so it becomes an incredible tool, not just for saving the park, not just for rebuilding the economy, but also for bringing um, a level of peace to, to the region, to contribute to the peace effort in, in Eastern Congo. started in 2007 when we um, came across a series of, of terrible killings of the mountain gorillas. We lost 10% of all of Virunga's mountain gorillas in the space of a few days. Um, and this of course is you know, one of the very most important gorilla populations in the world. Um, and we couldn't work out why. And it took us about a year to discover that it was because people desperately needed fuel wood. Um, and it wasn't the mountain gorillas that were being targeted. Um, they were being targeted because rangers were protecting the forest because it's the gorilla's habitat. And actually it's the forest that they wanted. Um, and so rather than maintain this policing effort to keep people out of the forest, it made more sense to provide an alternative source of energy. And that was the rivers that could be harnessed as a source of energy without damaging the forest.
also been an amazing instrument for for peace. And so, through that, the park itself has um, you know has has um, taken a, a um, a really positive direction in terms of the wildlife numbers have started to come back. Um, the elephant numbers have gone from 80 in, the, in about 15 years ago um, to over 700 now. The mountain gorilla population has more than doubled. created is a, an independent payment network, uh, independent from debit and credit cards, that any consumer, any merchant with a bank account can use. We couldn't pay for everything we wanted with cards, because many merchants, especially small medium merchants, uh, were and often are not able, happy to, to accept cards for small payments. This means that you cannot bring cost below a certain threshold because you have too many players involved and they all have cost to make this system run and work. It revolutionized payment in Italy because suddenly merchants uh, that were only saying no card below 10 euros start to say, but I accept that it's paid. people that love to set aside money on Salis Pay. Uh, every time they pay, they put some money aside, is to be the instrument that helps millions of young people to start investing. Because the financial education is something that sounds also boring. And I don't want to make it sound boring. I want to make it sound engaging. I want people to have fun in discovering that after a couple of months, they'd saved a couple of hundred euros on Salis Pay and be thrilled in investing those money. Thank you.